Section 7.3. So before we start this trigonometric substitution, uh, originally um, they give us, they used to give us integration problem and then you just go like direct integration, I call it. Where you can just simply look at the integral and say, oh, I'm going to integrate it. Sometimes you have to expand, do some algebraic manipulation and integrate, right? Then at some point you look as like, no way, I can't do this by expanding or you know, factoring or do something. I need to use the U substitution. So this is the way it works. You go try to integrate it right away, see if it works. If it doesn't, you're going to try the U sub to make, to transform a difficult integral into a simpler version of it. Um, if it doesn't work, as happened, like let's say x sine x or x e x or x squared e x, those cannot be done with U sub. Then you try integration by parts. And at some point, you'll come across trig functions like sine cube x times cosine to the fifth x or cosine to the 20th x. Those with uh, integration by parts would be maybe impossible to do or super difficult. So we do uh, integration by, uh, we call trigonometric integrals, trig integrals as we did in section 7.2. And today, um, sometimes they give us integrals. There's no trick in there at all. Like the integrand part, there's no trick involved. But then it doesn't work with u sub. It doesn't work with integration by parts. It doesn't work because it doesn't have in, uh, in trick in, in it or within it. Then you might think like, oh my God, what am I going to do with this? You try U sub, integration by parts, not working. Then we need a different tool. That different tool is called trig substitution. And what is trig substitution? Trig substitution can come in three different formats. We start by letting A be a constant. A constant means like a number, any real number. A be a constant. So these are the three versions. These are the three versions that we have. The first one is if we have a squared minus x squared. If you look at the integral and part of it, it involves a number squared minus x squared or a number minus x squared inside the radical. Then to transform this using trigonometric stuff, we use a substitution here that x equals a sine any angle you like, we usually use theta. And you will see what happened. This, this substitution process will transform that square root part into no square root anymore. It will simplify it really nicely, and it will be easier to integrate. The other form that you might see is the x squared plus a squared. And in this case, the substitution would go x equals a tangent theta. The last form, it could be x squared minus a squared. And x in this case equals a secant theta. So there's only three forms you are supposed to know. Recall. We told you before, the integral of secant squared x dx is tangent x plus c. And the integral of cosecant squared x dx is what? Negative cotangent x plus c. And to see how to apply all these substitution tricks to transform an integral involving algebra into a trig, which will become at the end easier to integrate, let's look at an example. Let's look at integrating dx over x squared, the square root of 9 minus x squared. So if you look at a question like this and you are taking a test, you're like, Oh my God, I know I can't just integrate this right away. 
maybe I want to use the u sub. You try to use u equal 9 minus x squared, it doesn't work. Try to use u is the square root of 9 minus x squared, it's not going to work. Um, then you have to apply something different here. If you try by, by parts, it's not going to be easy. Okay, so now this looks like a number minus x squared. So if I go back to the three of them, which one does it match? It looks like the first one, right? A number minus x squared. So what would uh, a squared here be? A squared is the nine, right? The nine. So this is how I do it. The book doesn't structure it this way. I just, this is a structure I, I just uh, came up with and I, I followed. So remember, it says x equals a. What is a here again? This is the a square. It's, it's uh, a square nine, so a is three. Three sine theta. Three sine theta. Now from here, look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find three things. Every problem, I just follow the same steps. Three things. The first thing, I differentiate both sides. I got dx. dx is 3 cosine theta d theta. So far, so good. The next one, I take that radical term, which is 9 minus x squared, and try to get what that is in terms of theta. So how do I do that? Well, I substitute x with 3 sine. So that gives me 9 sine squared theta. We factor a 9 out, that gives me 1 minus sine squared theta. And what does that give us? The square root of 9 cosine squared theta. And that would be 3 cosine theta. Looks good. On the right side, I'm going to solve for that trig function, sine theta, x over 3. So now, what is sine? I draw a triangle. I assume theta to be here all the time. We know sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Right? Opposite over the hypotenuse. So by the Pythagorean theorem, I can do 9 minus x squared. If needed. That's good. And then another thing from here, I get theta. We try to solve for theta if we need this. Is sine inverse of x over 3. Watch. I'm going to take the problem and write it again. At dx x squared, square root of 9 minus x squared. And let's see what magically happened here. So dx, remember we got dx on the left. It's 3 cosine theta, 3 cosine theta d theta. What is x? You know, I want to substitute that in. What is x? x is 3 sine theta. So that becomes 9 sine squared theta. Good. And notice, what is this part here? I calculated is this, 3 cosine theta, so times 3 cosine theta. So, so far, so far, notice what I did. I used this part, I used this part, and I'm saving the, the last one on the right till the end. But let's see what happens. After we made the substitution, how did that transform the given problem or integral into a simpler one. The, did it really transform it? Let's see. The 3 cancels the 3. Cosine cancels cosine. And, you know, that 9 in the bottom, I can pull it outside as 1 over 9. D theta over sine squared theta. And what's 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared theta d theta. Now, wow, I know the formula for that. What is it? We recalled it earlier. Who said cotangent? It's negative cotangent theta plus C. So now, how are we going to do this watch? <clears throat> if I go back up, notice where I put a check mark. We finished the first one, second one, but we haven't applied this. Uh, I can use the triangle, right? I, I can use the triangle to find what cotan is. What is cotangent? Well, cotangent by definition, we know tangent opposite over adjacent. So that would be adjacent over opposite. So the adjacent on the right triangle, adjacent is the square root, and the opposite is x. So then I can uh, write, replace this with the square root of that. That's adjacent over opposite plus c. Now you can box it and draw a smiley face if you like.
keep in mind um, the integral of secant theta d theta secant theta d theta is natural log it's natural log of secant theta plus tan theta with the absolute value plus c it's a it's a formula for for integrating secant if you like i can show you where that came from um, let me show you just uh, how do you prove this the proof of it so the magic way to prove this is we're gonna multiply we're gonna multiply here by that's the trick secant theta plus tan theta top and bottom so here we have we multiply the top one secant square theta secant theta tan theta and keep the denominator the same keep the denominator the same and then what we're going to do is we use the u sub u sub for the denominator let's see what we get secant theta plus tan theta what's the u what's the derivative of secant is secant tan what's the derivative of tangent is secant square and now if you look at what i got for du you're going to notice that the top part of that integral oh my god that's du what a magic du over u right and we know a formula we learned in calc one this is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c and that's why the integral of secant is going to be uh, natural log of absolute value secant theta plus tan theta plus c let's look at this example integrate dx over the square root of 1 plus 4x squared. First thing when I look at this, I say, what am I going to do with that 1 plus 4x squared? Like, um, I would rewrite because we need to see it look like 1 squared plus something else squared, like a squared plus x squared. Right? And the the trick or the substitution set whatever you have here if it's x to x whatever that part should be a which is one this is a one what tangent theta and then in return i can solve by dividing by by two so that gave me what x is now we go through this process find dx derivative of tangent is secant squared theta d theta and always i like to find what this or transform this or rewrite this in terms of theta 2x is tangent so 4x squared is tangent squared and what is 1 plus tangent squared is secant square what can i do with the square root here comes outside a secant assuming the positivity and then from there remember how we solved for sine earlier we solved for for tangent is 2x or 2x over 1 and then we can construct the right triangle assuming theta there tangent is opposite over what adjacent then by the Pythagorean theorem we can solve for or find the hypotenuse and as I said before it's always good to solve for theta if we need it at the end tan inverse The integral was integrate dx over the square root of 1 plus 4x squared. Now dx, we found it right there, here. 
that's our dx. It's one half secant squared theta d theta. And we found what the square root of that thinking is was secant theta. So that tells me I can simplify one copy of secant from the top, pull the one half out, and that will leave only secant theta inside. And you're gonna say, wait, you just give us a formula and you prove it where it came from. So that's natural log of secant theta plus tan theta plus C. Don't box it, it's not yet done. The answer must end up with an X or in terms of X. One half natural log. Let's see. We have to find secant and tangent. Remember, already we used the first part and the second part. We haven't used that yet. We have tangent 2x, right? Tangent is 2x, so I can substitute 2x in there. And then we have secant. Well, secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's hypotenuse over adjacent. So secant hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's going to be this over 1. So it's going to be the square root of, if I move this, square root of 1 plus 4x squared. Now you can box it. Next example is the integral of dx over x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. So first thing that looks like 1 plus x squared or x squared plus 1. In that case, what do we use? x equals a is 1. 1 what? Tangent theta. 1 tangent theta. Three things we can get out of this. dx, derivative of tangent is secant squared theta d theta. I'm going to find what is this in terms of theta. So x squared means tangent squared theta plus 1, 3 halves. What's tangent squared plus 1? Secant squared. The square cancels each other. We get secant cubed theta. Also, from tangent theta equals x means x over 1. We can construct the right triangle. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent, right? Opposite over adjacent. So then we can solve for the hypotenuse. Then the integral they give us, let's see what happened dx is secant squared theta d theta. And the other one is secant q. The whole thing in the denominator, we found it in the middle as secant q. Then this equals to d theta over secant theta. 1 over secant is cosine. And we know the integral of cosine is integral of cosine is negative sine. Negative or just sine? Sine. Plus C. Then we have to go back to the triangle and find what sine Theta is. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite was x, if you look at the right triangle, and the hypotenuse was the square root of 1 plus x squared.
the next one is to try this one and let's make it definite integral let's put the square root of 3 to 2 so the first thing we do here is I like to work on this with no definite integral keep the bounds until the end right like we, we will uh, come back to them later on so when I look at x squared minus 3 that looks like well, maybe I can write the 3 as square root of 3 squared, right? You have x squared minus a squared. So x is x and a is square root of 3, right? So then x equals a what? What's tan secant or sine? Secant. Secant theta. And then we have three things to work on. One, to get dx, which is square root of 3, derivative of secant is secant tan, and don't forget the d theta. And the other one I want to know or find what the square root of x squared minus 3 is. I know x squared, if I square the x, that will give me 3 secant squared theta minus 3. Then I pull the 3 out. That gives me secant squared theta minus 1. Secant square theta minus 1 is tangent square theta. See, trig plays a lot of important role in calculus. And I can pull the, keep the square root of 3 as is, the other one becomes tan theta. From there, we can solve for secant is x over square root of 3. And after we solve for that, we can construct the right triangle. This is hypotenuse over adjacent. This gives us x squared minus 3. Again, I like to always solve for theta secant inverse of x over square root of 3. So now we look at the integral and substitute in there. The integral was the square root. I'm not including the bounds yet. Double check x, OK. So dx was, this part was the square root of 3 tan theta dx was square root again secant theta tan theta d theta and x was x was square root of 3 secant theta we try to simplify as much as we can and we can pull the square root of 3 out that gives me tan theta square d theta and if you remember last time, we integrated that by rewriting this as secant squared minus 1. If you like, we can do it. From here, integral of secant squared is tangent. Integral of 1 is theta plus c. Now we need to go back and see what tangent theta was. Tangent theta is the opposite over adjacent minus square root of 3. Now theta, right, what is theta? We have to go back to the figure and find what theta is. We found it to be secant inverse of x over square root of 3. That's where theta came in. That's why we found, we used to find what theta is. These cancel each other. Um, and now we say we are going to go back to the definite part, square root of 3 over 2, for the integral we were trying to find. And say, you know, I can, I can, look at the answer we got x squared minus 3 minus square root of 3 
secant inverse x over root 3 no need for the plus c anymore but the bounds are required what do you guys think now we open two large parentheses substitute the two in that would be four minus three minus square root of three secant square inverse two over root three substitute root three in that would be three minus three minus square root of three secant square inverse root three over root three which is one let's see what we get one minus square root of three secant inverse of 2 over square root of 3 that is pi over 6 minus this one here is 0 and secant inverse of 1 is also 0 so that would give me the answer 